About four years ago, YouTube's most popular user, PewDiePie, entered into a fierce competition for more users with the Indian music label T-Series. Explaining T-Series' subscriber growth, its president Neeraj Kalyan attributed it to the Jio effect. This is when Reliance Jio, through cheap data plans, expanded mobile broadband teleconnectivity for millions of people, especially in rural India. Kalyan, in his own words to the LA Times, called it an explosion of consumption across media. And well, T-Series won. Well, this explosion is happening and it is continuing on YouTube today. It's not loud or dramatic, but today YouTube has quietly integrated itself in our lives. In not only how we watch music videos of T-Series, but also how we remember our past and even how we vote. Or as I discovered in my own case, how to even shoot and edit this video. Each month, millions of Indians on their smartphones and with a voice search use YouTube and its social and cultural impact is massive from the visible to the sublime. At Market Visser notes, the extent to which we take everyday objects for granted is the precise extent to which they govern and inform our lives. I think it is very important as I make my first video to review Mark Bergen's book published last year on the history of YouTube titled as Like, Comment and Subscribe. Welcome to Amalta's Talks, a place for conversations on the law, public policy and technology centered in India. As per the back jacket of Bergen's book, it presents the only comprehensive account of YouTube and reveals the inside story of its technology and business. It fits within the pantheon of business literature on Silicon Valley technology companies such as The Everything Store by Brad Stone for Amazon, In the Plex by Stephen Levy for Google, or No Filter by Sarah Fryer for Instagram. Now this review is broken into three questions. First, how was the reading experience? Second, what are the core ideas of the book and the learnings I take away from it? And finally, what's my rating or should you read it? So let's start. Well, Like, Comment and Subscribe is a thick book. It runs into about 403 pages. These contain a micro history that is very dense. Its narrative structure adopts a very linear timeline starting from the early days of YouTube the ambitions of its founders being driven towards Silicon Valley Riches, which is the first part of four thematic sections. This was also my favorite. Here we get to first know about Chad, Kareem and Jen as they tinker out with the idea of YouTube and swing between whether building it as a video dating platform like Hot or Not or a repository for videos like Flickr. Kareem and Chen soon leave and Chad Hurley remains as the primary founder even after the Google takeover. This is not to last. As the book puts it, he has normal guy vibes that didn't always play well at Google where some degree of world-conquering narcissism was required. What improves this narrative flow is the clever use of a parallel view of the creators of the YouTube platform. This often features PewDiePie and other superstar creators that are juxtapositioning first at the periphery and then later at the center as their content powers the growth of views on YouTube. All through the book, provides an invisible chair inside the YouTube headquarters from their terrible jokes to conversations about strategy being set out in vivid detail. Now, what did I take away or learn from like, comment or subscribe? I think there were five themes which came through clearly for me. The first thing that really resonated with me was YouTube's massive cultural impact. I mean, after all, it led to the discovery of talent such as Justin Bieber. You may say that Justin Bieber and Talent Apart, how are you even serious? Well, I do mean in terms of a cultural impact. For even the word believer is introduced in our lexicon due to YouTube. It represents internet culture which is truly crossed over and is today a part of our language, speak and thought. Now such discoveries were at first products of a manual curation process by a team known as Cool Hunters. Predictably, this team is soon disbanded as YouTube scales up. This brings me to the second takeaway, which seems like a natural progression for many Silicon Valley technology companies. As they reach levels of organizational maturity after tasting initial success and user acquisition, their ambitions, which always keep scaling up. This stage is a blend of accelerating scale of adoption, also mixing it with the search for profit. Your functions are automated, revenue streams discovered and created. Inevitably, the algorithms do take over. This is when the honeymoon is over and a wedlock of surveillance capitalism begins. Now, changes to YouTube's algorithm start fairly simply 
with what is called as co-visitation. As the book puts it, when someone clicked on a video, the page's right flank, its related video section, filled with clips that other viewers who clicked on the same video watched. People who like this also like that. This simple recommendation system changes fast as YouTube pivots from manual curation by cool hunters and tailored video experiences are implemented just like any other social media website. After all, it wants you to spend more time watching its videos. This strategy is a success. For in 2018, YouTube's chief product officer, Neil Mohan, mentions on a panel at CES that 70% of the watch time on YouTube is spent watching videos the algorithm recommends, making it reach its goal of serving 1 billion minutes of playtime each day a few years even before its target. The third big takeaway for me is that the book is about Silicon Valley hustle culture. This book offers a reflection with a critical estimation of how tech founders have lost their sheen in recent years. Take for instance Larry Page's statements which were called Larryisms. One of them being that if you're working on something, make it 10 times bigger. Statements like that sound off-key today were celebrated in the past as welcome ambition. Another one is the cultural impact of an Olympian book called Will It Make the Boat Go Faster? The idea is that you want to have one thing that will inspire your team and you want to have one central focus only, with everything fitting around it. For instance, you need to ask yourself the question repeatedly, does it make the boat go faster? Like, should we eat this thing for breakfast? Does it make the boat go faster? This culture of relentless growth not only is presented in the revenue models of platforms such as YouTube, but also offers deep insight into design choices which have resulted in the autoplay, the infinite scroll, and also the growing smartphone addiction which is suffered by many young people today. But what does this mean for much more broader lessons that we hold? And this is the fourth big takeaway. What is truthful? What is balanced or even healthy for democracy? Does YouTube actually play this function? And I think here, videos are allowed and promoted and hidden from us as per YouTube's own algorithms and content moderation practices. These choices seem like a mix, both at the enforcement as well as the policy setting level from the very start as we get to know that YouTube took down videos of the King of Thailand just within Thailand or took down the trailer of the innocence of Muslims only in Egypt and Libya but did not do so for Pakistan. Or even initially taking down the video for Robert Thicke's smash hit blurred lines on the grounds that it sexualized nudity under the test of, and I quote here, my wife wouldn't watch it. All through, it is my belief YouTube is conscious of its power and its reach and aims to maintain service availability while also having a healthy bias towards pre-expression. This can lead to both positive but also very terrible outcomes in a place like India. Only last week, there was communal violence in Haryana after a religious procession and right before that, a provocative video which went viral. This video was by Mohit Monu Manesar, a district coordinator of Bajrangal, who had amassed about 2 lakh subscribers before being shut down on YouTube and even received a silver play button on October 31st, 2022. He is accused of a double murder, in fact, of Junaid Khan and his nephew Nasir Khan in Rajasthan and is presently absconding. And as per an investigation by Alt News, it was found a few days even before this murder that Mono and his team had uploaded several violent videos on YouTube itself. Well, YouTube did take action in February this year, but it was already too late. Yes, content moderation like this is a tough job and the cracks show not only in these kind of decisions or lack of decisions, but also offer a lack of transparency. This is also due to certain systems which prize efficiency as well as are a place in several large corporate organizations like an OKR and our objective and key results framework where efficiency and speed may replace accuracy, truth and the service to democracy. This is what the book notes as, for instance, a moderator's job performance was graded on the review gap, which is basically a metric on how quickly it took them to judge a flagged video. My final takeaway, I think the book serves as a cautionary tale, where YouTube's concerns over regulation led them to overlook violent, racist, sexist and damaging content. Essentially, they did not moderate the platform well enough. Instead, they advocated for free speech, which is also positive relying on machine learning 
but that leads to inadvertently fueling extremism. This book profiles individual producers, revealing some of them who actually exploited the same algorithms for profit, regardless of the harm caused, posting polarizing content, while many others who made meaningful videos fail to actually derive any kind of living or profit, they have always been dissenting voices. For instance, there is one person who is profiled and has a recurring character in this book called Claire Stapleton, who is termed as the Bard of Google and its moral voice. But they also seem to leave over a period of time being dismissed as being ungoogly. Now, in the end, we are left to ponder as much as we love the ability of YouTube to entertain, educate and inform us, its role in our lives and broader implications for society. Its impact only grows in a country such as India, where journalist Shivam Vich has scowled out the ship from the 2019 WhatsApp election to the 2024 as the YouTube election. This is evident even in the recent overtures and the possibility of commercial arrangements between the central and state governments in India and YouTube influencers that I had tweeted about a few weeks earlier. So how do I rate, like, comment and subscribe? I quite like this book but agree with the Goodreads rating of 3.7. Mark has provided indeed a rich, nuanced and deeply reported account on YouTube. I even like the clever structuring but had some difficulty in finishing it over a week which is usually how much time I take to finish a book. Here I believe the book could have been more tightly edited. The first 100 pages had a much more exciting gingered pace compared to what followed later. Or maybe it was just the description of the early energy of a startup that which appealed to be more. I don't think this is a negative book in terms of its overall theme, but also is not a hagiographic endorsement of Silicon Valley founders or a technology company. So I would recommend this book, especially to those who enjoy public policy books or are interested in understanding the economics, the market dynamics, decide decisions, and the early history of Silicon Valley companies such as YouTube and may also be a part of the core audience of this channel. Before I end, I would like to encourage you to make a purchase from your local brick and mortar bookshop. Sure, the book may be more expensive, but all this money goes towards supporting a small business. Also, please remember this review, while detailed, is in no way a substitute to reading the book itself. My own takeaways are only here to assist you, derive greater meaning, enjoy the book before or after reading it. And do let me know what you are reading these days and is it any good? Go ahead, post a comment or send me an email on the book on your nightstand or your work desk and share back a recommendation with me. Thank you for tuning in and I hope to soon meet you again under the shade of an Amal Tastri. Take care and be well.